Hello, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. Um, and it is full on summer here in South Carolina, so it is very hot. Now I do have air conditioning and fans in every room. I have it going on right now. But the library is on the second floor, and as we all know from elementary science, heat rises. So the second floor is always so much hotter than everywhere else, and actually filming, I don't know, but filming always, it's just... It's just it feels like a strenuous activity, like you're exercising. Maybe it's like your brain exercising. I don't know. But that sound you hear right now is a Dylan. And typically I shut him out and he, so he doesn't like make noise while I film because that's what he loves to do. I don't know. Anyway, but I'm not gonna do that today. So you're just gonna have Dylan's beautiful sound technician-y background noise going on right now. But I do have a lot of great books to talk to you about today and I'm excited. So I actually have a couple that I read in June because I didn't fit them in my last wrap up. Yeah, let's just get started because I have a lot of books I want to talk to you about today. First up is A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza and I love this book. I absolutely love this book. I was so excited to read this book. Uh, Samaya over from Instagram was like, Kendra, you need to read this book like right now. And so I picked it up and she was totally right. I was so Oh my word, this is everything I love in a book. The subjective part of me that has favorite tropes and different things, that's all in here. Uh, I love books about families and about religion and about multiple perspectives and non-linear narratives and that's all in here. So we have an Indian American Muslim family living in California and this one of the sons has been estranged from his family for three years for we don't know why and he comes back for his sister's wedding and then we flash back and we get the perspectives of the mom the oldest sister who is the one getting married and the, the brother who's the youngest of the three children and we follow their like narratives and sort of like three perspectives moving forward in time don't really know how to illustrate that but that's basically how it goes and so you get often the same events from different perspectives then we return to the wedding and then we move forward with the narrative this book is so well constructed and i love how she reveals certain pieces of information in a certain order and how we get those different perspectives on the same events and the ending is so surprising i'm not going to tell you what the ending is like or whose perspective it's from or anything because that would be a spoiler but I was actually listening to this book it was like 3 a.m. I was like I had just I just have to finish it and I ended up crying and so I'm trying not to wake up Sam but I'm just like ugly crying in bed because this book is so beautiful and and I can't really go into a ton of a ton of detail why like specifics because that would be spoiling the book so just know that everyone's saying it's wonderful they're right right it's like well worth the hype. Oh, so good. So another book I have is There There by Tommy Orange and this is his debut novel. Now Tommy Orange is a Native American man who grew up in the Bay Area of California which is near San Francisco. That's actually where my husband's from. So when I was reading this book I was like oh that's so cool because I've been to these places. I think a lot of the characters live in Oakland in particular um, and I, I just I just love that part of it. Uh, you know Tommy Orange really wanted to portray what it's like to be a Native American and living in the city. He calls it the urban Indian experience and so there are like I don't know, almost seemingly almost like a dozen perspectives in here. And this is one that I did on audio, but because all of the characters are connected like a spider web, it's like they all know each other or are connected to each other by various means, I feel like I should read this in print and then like write out the spider web like chart and go from there because there really isn't much of a plot to this book. It's just these stories of these different characters' lives. It's almost like short stories, but they're all interconnected with each other. And one of the things that Tommy Orange has talked about that he wanted to do was portray the multifaceted nature of being a Native American and that they disagree and some Native Americans love their heritage. Some of them have mixed feelings and there's biracial Native Americans and he, he really covers just the wide range of that experience and I really appreciated that because we are having now finally, I think, a, more of a discussion on how we view often certain ethnicities like a monolith. And we're like, oh, we have, you know, the Native American writer. And then, you know, the whole Sherman and Alexi thing happened and we realized, oh, wait, right, right. We probably should have more than one Native American writer, right? And that's what Tommy Orange is like responding to is this idea that his culture is a monolith and he wants to like... I was going to say like destroy that idea but maybe just take that idea down might be a better way but he definitely 
does what he sets out to do and I really appreciate this book but I feel like I definitely need to reread it and write out the structure because I missed a lot because I didn't have that chart. Maybe the chart should be at the back of the book. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Maybe I'm just obsessed with structure. I don't know. So hot. Okay, that's two books down. Now I'm going to tell you that I read this book. I'm now no, book number four, Goblet of Fire. Samuel's in book number three. And then once we both read book number five is when we'll be back to finish off our series. So just that's the update on this. Um, I really love this. And, you know, it's been a bit of a time with my migraine and it's still hanging around. And I just, you know, it just makes the world better. It makes the world a better place. Ah, I, I just, I just love the Harry Potter audiobooks. They make me so happy. <laughs> Another book I read is Number One Chinese Restaurant by Lillian Lee. This is her debut novel. And this is about a Chinese restaurant and kind of the family behind that restaurant. Now, I really enjoy Lillian Lee's writing. Some of her characters are very compelling, but this is a book where all of the characters, and there's a wide range of, of characters, all continuously make horrible decisions. And I don't think characters have to be likable, but like the usually like the perspective character I don't think they have to be likable but I really want like a, a life raft I want at least one person who is a good person or at least someone that I like even if they're not a great person like I want that something to hold on to because when all of the characters are not likable and they're all making horrible decisions I'm just not really invested in the book and just having that much of an intense experience is just like I'm not emotionally invested, and I know that that is probably more true to life. A novel is an imitation of life. It's not actually life. So you can't, it doesn't sound exactly a straight translation. So anyway, I just really struggle with that. And so I wasn't really invested in the characters and I didn't really care what happened. And I was very frustrated with all of them the whole way through. And I feel like most of the characters are static. There's one character, maybe two, that I feel like has grown throughout this book, but otherwise they all are equally horrible at the end of the book as they are in the beginning of the book. So yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. But I, but I will say I will read what she writes next because I do love her writing and she's very skilled at it. It's just the characters, man, it just really gets me sometimes. Okay. The last book is a book I haven't seen too many places, so I just picked it up randomly when I was at my parents' house, um, and that is Squeezed by Alyssa Court, and the subtitle is Why Our Families Can't Afford America, and this is about the middle American middle class and why the American middle class is disappearing and how my generation is going to probably not be as successful or as affluent as our parents and reasons why you know, the rise of cost of living, and also why, like, professions that require a lot of school, like academia, uh, they don't pay a lot, but you still have all of these student loans, and trying to buy houses, in the horrible housing market, in different areas of the United States, like the Bay Area, for example, uh, and in New York, and just, like, urban areas, and how everything is so expensive that we are almost, we are recreating that, like, areas where only the affluent can live, and it's, like, bumping out you know, people of the lower classes and even middle class people. And she looks at different topics in each chapter and gives you people who are trying to become middle class families and people who are trying to stay middle class families. And I feel like she has a great balance of giving you specifics, but also like studies and different things. Um, I really enjoyed this book because I feel like in the news, everyone's talking about the disappearing middle class in America, but it's not real, I think, until we read something like this and we see the specifics of the changes that are happening in America. And yeah, I've read a lot of books on lower classes recently, working class in particular, um, and race relations, and I feel like she captures the whole gambit of uh, people of different ethnicities and backgrounds and versus immigrants versus people who've lived in America for generations and just, you know, all different types of Americans. So I love that about this book and I think it was very helpful. So those are the books that I read in the first half of July. Um, have you guys read any of those books? What are you guys reading? Uh, but I guess that's it for me, and I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.